Welcome to another Cook Back in Time. Today I'm on the borders of Somerset and Wiltshire at the medieval castle of Farley Hungerford. Our expert guest chef Steve Ruddle of Historic Reenactment Society, the Medieval Free Company, will be setting up camp to recreate some medieval morsels. A perfect pottage, a venison stew, a flowery fool, and something very fishy to feed the modern custodians of the castle, Babs Biddle and Ashley Mainland of English heritage. The medieval era began with the successful invasion of England by the second Duke of Normandy in 1066 and lasted until the end of Plantagenet rule some 400 years later. England's new king divided the country amongst his barons who wasted no time in building a network of state-of-the-art stone castles to suppress the Saxon population. The new rule of Harold's successor brought with it the feudal system, a sort of medieval protection racket that had worked so well in the rest of Europe. The system improved social stability to such an extent that agriculture and the arts blossomed. For the next 200 years, the relative unity of Western Europe under Roman Catholicism led to religious war and a succession of crusades to capture the Holy Lands. It was the death of Richard III in 1485, the last Plantagenet King of England, that ended the medieval era and brought a new dynasty to the English throne. How long have you worked here? I'm going up to 15 years working here at Farley. All that time as a custodian? All the time as a custodian. I've never wished to go anywhere else. I love my job. I enjoy the work that English heritage has um, progressed here. Since I've been here, I've seen some vast changes. We've had a new shop. We've brought in an audio tour for all our visitors, which um, gives people a better understanding of the site. And as we're talking, we're in the process of putting in an education centre here as well, which I honestly always believe that children are our number one visitor because they're our future. The history of Farley Castle goes back to um, 870. Originally, there was just a small manor house made of wood, and, and then it was extended over the years until Sir Thomas Hungerford came here in 1369, whereupon then he completely enlarged the manor house and then started to fortify his um, property without having a royal license. But sadly, Thomas Hungerford died in 1398 before it was all completed, so his son Walter finished it. And how long did it stay in good condition? Right up until 1686, when Edward Hungerford, who was nicknamed the Spenford, had to sell Farley Castle um, with 14 other properties to clear all his debts. <laughs> he was very friendly with Charles II, and Charles II used to come here quite often. And of course, Edward would have to put on gambling, hunting, and Edward Hungford was known to say at the throw of a dice, well, here goes such and such property. Oh, no. And uh, so the wealth of the Hungerfords soon dwindled. Tell you what, how about having a little, little time off? Would you like a taste of some medieval food and bring a colleague with you? I'm sure we'd be delighted to join you. <laughs> Steve, you are a professional cook, I know, but how did you get into medieval cookery? Um, I got into medieval cookery mainly because my family and myself all do um, reenactments of the society called the Medieval Free Company. Today I'm going to cook a medieval pottage, mm. um, Syria 1460. This was a... It was like a vegetable stew, basically. Every single person would eat it every day. It would be pure vegetables. Every now and again, like once a week, you might find a rabbit or a hare or something like that, which we would then put into the... just to give it a little bit of meat into it. While you're cutting the onions, can I ask you about what you're wearing? I mean, first of all, the cross and the bell. You weren't a priest. <clears throat> no, everybody had a cross and a bell because of the religion. Everybody was very, very religious in those days. It was just to ward away the devil, because everybody was scared that the devil was going to come and take them away. Ah. What, what do you want now? Um, I think I'll have some parsnips now, please. How many? Two, please. OK. You don't, don't peel them, do you? They always reckon, I think people do now, the goodness is in the outsides. Well, I never peel potatoes, don't but you? that's just laziness. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
So we've got everything chopped up. Yes. Does it all go in together? Yes. No. Well, we're going to put the butter in, like so. Just let that melt a little bit. Mm -hmm. we'll put the onions in. A couple of onions there. Just brown them off very slightly. I think I'll have the leeks next, please. The leeks okay. go in next. Right. To cook. Oh, did they suffer from eye problems with all that very, smoke? Very, very, very much so. Very much so. At the end of the day, my eyes are actually streaming. Yeah, mine are too. Um, Give all this a good stir. Let this cook away now for five minutes. Uh-huh. And then we'll carry on adding things to the pot then. While we're waiting for this to cook, Jan, I'm just going to uh, talk about our next course. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do salt cod. And we're going to poach this salt cod. And I'll just move this grill over onto the fire now. Just to get some heat into it to get the water boiling. And I'll talk about the cod. Now, as you can see, hung up on the side of the fire is a piece of cod. OK, what do you do with that? Just sliced this, up? This cod I've prepared one earlier. Oh, yes. <laughs> which is in the pot. After you've soaked it overnight, what you would do is... See, it's going to come back now to its oh. original state. Oh. That looks more like it. So what you would do now, you would just wash it mm -hmm. about three or four times in clear water, just really basically to get rid of the salt. Mm. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to poach this. Yes. Like any normal fish, just poach this for about 15 minutes. I'm going to turn it over once. Yeah. And... Uh, what about our um, pottage? Let's take the lid off. Yep, yeah, it's doing very nice. So i just got some stock in here. It's a vegetarian stock. Let's put it in. So basically now, all we're doing now is putting all the rest of the vegetables, which we chopped earlier, into the pot. And as you can see, it looks more like a vegetable stew now, which the term pottage. It's only vegetables, but it smells good. And it tastes even better. I think now we need to add some salt, Jan, if you wouldn't mind passing it to me. I'm just going to put in a couple of tablespoons of salt, roughly. <laughs> That's quite a lot, actually. Just adds to the flavour. OK, I think now this cod's ready to turn over. And what's our sauce going to be made of? So I'm going to make a herb sauce now. And use some fresh herbs. Let's take these off of there. In here I've got some mint, which I'm just going to chop up. The next thing I'm going to put in now, if you'd like to pick me up some... Fresh parsley, please. Mm-hmm. And my very favourite herb here. Love it. Basil. Yeah. It's quite simple, but I bet it tastes good. It tastes absolutely lo lovely. It's just a diff different than having a white sauce with your mm. fish. A touch of salt over the top. That helps grind it, doesn't yeah. it? I need one garlic clove in with this. A little black pepper, start grinding that all down into a paste. Is the consistency important? Um, I feel it is, actually. I feel it needs to be fairly well broken down into a paste. And then when you add our next ingredients... Which is? Vinegar uh -huh. and breadcrumbs. If you have Where's your breadcrumbs, the breadcrumbs? Breadcrumbs? Okay, right. just add a couple of tablespoons of breadcrumbs in there. I very love fine. you professional cooks, you know, it's add a few to and you don't measure anything. <laughs> Once again, just very lightly now put it in with the ingredients you already have. Now Where's what we're going to do now is just add a little bit of cider vinegar in with this. A couple of tablespoons again, just to make it into a, a runny type of paste, but now we'll leave this for a couple of minutes to let the bread absorb the mm -hmm. vinegar, cider vinegar. The fish looks Yeah, the as fish is very, very nearly done just now. Just about done. Right, if you pass me the plate, please. Now what we're going to do now is just add a little bit of sauce on the side, like so. A little bit across the top. Here we go. Great. Medieval cod. Join us after the break when our guest chef, Steve Ruddell, cooks up a venison stew and serves it in a novel dish. I pick flowers for a fool and the medieval free company's band play music from the Middle Ages. All that in A Cook Back in Time. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back. I'm in the Chapel Gardens of Farley Hungerford Castle. Today we're cooking up a medieval menu for the custodians of the castle, just to show them what food tasted like in those days. But first, I'm off to find out more about the family who for hundreds of years called this place home. Just here we can actually see the wall painting of St George. George was found behind a fall of plaster and he actually dates back to 1440. And in around 1880, um, the plaster just started to fall away and this was what was discovered. We keep uh, a very close monitor on him. Certain times our wall painting conservation people come down and they have to insert this um, like a glue behind and um, to protect more flaking off um, and as you can see we're doing a close monitoring the little black square that you see attached to the wall that actually monitors all the moisture in the wall and what everybody thinks is a microphone is actually picking up the atmosphere around so he's under close supervision at all times now this is superb oh now this is the tomb of edward and Margaret Hungerford. This is one of the finest tombs in the country for the Civil War period. Now Margaret had this tomb made when Edward died in 1648. She paid 1,100 pounds for this tomb to be made. They did spend, didn't they? They did, but I sometimes wonder why, because he was known as quite an argumentative, cantankerous old goat. Oh, <laughs> she wanted a nice tomb, <laughs> yes? Yes, yes I, that's what I would say. Hi Jan, welcome back. Uh, is the pottage ready yet? Let's just check, we'll find out. Yep, oh, yes. I think that's just about done now, look. Very wholesome for you. Mm, I'm sure. So now we're on to another main course. That's right, Jan. Um, while we're waiting for the pottage to cook, I've prepared these vegetables here and we're going to do a venison stew. Uh-huh. So we're going to start now by putting the butter in the pan. Nice knob of butter, as you can see. And then I'm going to put in two large onions. So we're just going to sweat these off now. <clears throat> and in the meantime, yeah. a lovely piece of venison there. Yes. That's a nice piece of haunch. Really, you know, they, they didn't have a lot, but what they did eat was good, wasn't Very it? Very nice. Venison is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous meat. And we're just going to chop this up now into small dice cubes. How much venison have you are you using and how many will it feed? This is about uh, two pound of venison here, and mm -hmm. I would suggest it would feed about four to six people this yeah. as, a, as a main course meal. What do you need next, Steve? Um, the mushrooms now, please. Thank you. Wild mushrooms are the best, of course. Let's cut these off to a nice, slightly browned. And then we'll add the meat. Do you want some salt or do you add it afterwards? We will, I'll put that in right at the very end, okay. just for tasting. This is going to be about five minutes now until this has got to a certain cooking stage. Basically all you're doing is cooking the outside of the meat, sealing it. Which is what we do today, exactly, don't we? Exactly, exactly. If I was cooking for more people I'd just use a lot bigger pot and yeah. this would seal a lot quicker. The red wine please, we're going to put about half a pint of red wine into here as uh, red wine was very, very popular. Was it cheap? It must have been cheap. Very if cheap. The ordinary people Very were. cheap. They used to have a lot of vineyards, actually, in oh. England. And then when they started trading in France, yeah. they uh, start, they, the French wine was a lot better. Yes. So they had French wine coming in, and then all the vineyards started to close up in England. What a shame. And I'd like a little bit of cider in here now, okay. please. Thank you. Uh, just a few splashes of cider. And the all-important ingredient, what they used to use, and that's honey, please. Thank you. Just to sweeten it up a little bit, because uh, the red wine is fairly sharp. And two nice big dollops of honey. Oh, I thought I was going to get lick the spoon there. <laughs> there you go. Right. We can now add the carrots, please. And the celery. Forgotten about that. Yeah. Can I eat the leaf? No, I won't. <laughs> I 
Well, the stew's doing very nicely now. I'll leave that now for about 15 minutes. Just to simmer away, just to cook out nice and tenderly. So what we're going to do now, instead of putting the stew on a plate, mm. we've got a little twist here. I've got a small loaf of bread, which they used to bake themselves, and they were near enough always in rounds. And what we're going to do, we're going to cut the top off of this, okay, like so. Now we're going to ask you to put your fingers inside mm. and hollow all the bread oh, in. Take all the bread crumbs out. Okay. So what we're doing now, we're forming like a cup or a bowl to yes. put our stew into. Mm -hmm. So when they ate the stew, they, they peeled off the bread as well and dunked it in <laughs> to fill them up. Hey, that's good. I would have tried that, a cut yeah. down on the washing up. Exactly. But we don't throw away the bread crumbs. Didn't because think you would. <laughs> what we would do with those is when a stew is finished, we would just thicken the sauce up by putting the bread actually in the sauce. No waste. No, I like exactly. that. Exactly. Well, it's so, very good. Yeah. Very good. Now what we're going to do now is with your bread roll already prepared. Yeah. We're going to just pop this into like so. And then what they would have done is mm -hmm. cut the top and just pop the top back on. Just to keep it warm. For the last recipe, I went in search of elderflowers with some key members of the Medieval Free Company, who happened to be Steve's <laughs> wife Helen and children Louise, Christopher and Nicholas. Helen, or Nelly to give you your medieval name, while the men were doing the, the cooking, I know the women did this sort of thing, but what else did they do? They acted in a very supportive role to the whatever the men were doing as a travelling group. The families were there purposely just to support the men, and through the support, it would either be making herbal remedies for if they were injured in battle, and anything that was needed within the, the group to keep themselves ticking over. So they were used um, as craftswomen to make things that could be sold to raise money, to buy food, or whatever was needed. So they were totally self-sufficient? Yes. It was, a, it was a sort of travelling people, yes. but, but like a big community. A complete community and everybody worked to keep the community going. So you, you formed a group playing medieval music? We did, yes. We call ourselves Tangleweed. And, and what, are the, what are the instruments? Um, I play a shawm. It's um, a reed-like instrument that sounds very Arabic. Yes. And Christopher? I play a sort of drum which just basically gives a steady beat to the music. Do you play anything, Nicholas? Yes, I play the percussion, like the tambourine and the bells and stuff. Really Great. I can't wait to listen. So, Monsieur Le Chef, what's next? Well, I'm going to do an uh, old flower and rhubarb thorn. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what we would need is a piece of muslin like this. And what oh, and those elderflowers? Elderflowers that, that you picked earlier, please. Gosh, just, they're quite strong. They're very strong. Aren't they? Uh, not enough or too much? Or? Oh, that's just fine. Okay. Month of May, month of June, these elderflowers are out. Yes. And what we do, we put them into this muslin. If you've got a piece of string handy there, please. Okay. And wrap them up like our modern tea bags. One and a half to two pints of boiling water. Just drop this in, just like a tea bag. And leave that in there for about 15 minutes to infuse. We've got the rhubarb already cut. Yeah. Which is What's looking that about? fine. It's a lovely rhubarb, this. It's about, about a pound and a half of rhubarb there. We'll put the rhubarb into the pan. And we'll cook this. Well, that's fine, I think. Yeah, that's perfect. What we'll do now, we'll take this off to cool down. And when it's cool, we can then uh, add the cream to it. Mm -hmm. OK. OK, 
Okay, John, I think this is just about beaten up enough now. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll get the uh, rhubarb, which is now cold. Yeah, that's fine. And then we will add the cream into the rhubarb. And just fold this in gently. Don't beat it in, just gradually fold this in into the mixture. Well, all the hard work's done and it's time for Ashley and Babs to take their taste buds back to the 15th century. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, that's the, uh, the pottage mm -hmm. and uh, as a vegetarian you can eat that because I can assure you it was vegetable stock. Okay. All right. Babs, have you had um, the food often before? I've had it quite a few times. Mm -hmm. It's do, always do been very good. help yourself? I would love to try this. Good. That's very nice. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a stew, very, isn't it? Lots of herbs and things in it. It's mm -hmm. really, yeah. really oh, it's tasty. Mm. Yeah. This is cod. This is, mm. oh. I've just been told what your medieval name is, oh, Stumpy. Yes. Stumpy, that's right. Thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. He's, he's quite a tall, well-built guy. Cod with a sauce. What do you think that's of the mm. sauce? It's great, isn't it? It is, yeah. You can really taste the mint in it. And that... Is venison stew. There goes. Oh, this is obviously a favourite of yours. Mm. Now you've got a <laughs> And a special for jam. Oh, oh, you're mm. great. Thank you very much. I oh, I did like it. Mm. And uh, mm. verdict, ladies. Delicious. You can come and cook for really me anytime. Nice. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. Really as good as yeah. always. As good mm -hmm. as always. Oh. <laughs> Well, I hope you've enjoyed our medieval menu cooked at the medieval castle, the fantastic and interesting Farley Hungerford in Somerset. Hope you'll make a date to join us again on A Cook Back in Time.